Hi, welcome to The Coaching Game. I'm Laurie Lawson and my co-host is... Terry Yaffe, and this must be Coaches Creating Change. After a hiatus. <laughs> After a big hiatus, absolutely. I know, I know. Um, yeah, but we, we were talking and we said, you know what? Well, we're technically, we're not back, as you can see. We're, we're Zooming, we're Zooming like everyone <laughs> right. else in the world right now. Um, but we decided that it is, if not a show now, my gosh, when will we be doing it? Because we are in the middle of change. We're in the middle of chaos. We're in the middle of, we don't even know what we're in the middle of. Um, right. But we figured this is a good time for a show. And the, when Terry and I were talking, the one thing that we were agreement, in agreement on was that we don't have the answers. We, don't, we have the questions. Oh, boy, do we have the questions. But we don't have the answers. So we thought it might be a good time to sort of work out a few things and see what, what are the concerns and just get everybody sort of thinking and finding out um, where we're going from here, if indeed we know, you know, or how yeah. we're going to go from here, I guess is a better way. Yeah. Exactly. You know, we're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, I think, because we don't have the answer. I mean, answers, not that we ever had the answers, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's um, as coaches, how do we navigate today's landscape with clients and what is required of us? Um, as we kind of stand or sit in our humanity and being available to clients, what hat do we wear? And what are the parameters for each hat? Those are, those are the questions that we came up with. And it was like, and I think even before we deal with that, it's like, well, what, what, what have we had to change in ourselves because mm. of this, you know? Um, and then how do we, do we adapt? Is, does that become part of our humanity? I guess it does. But then how do we adapt that to the job that we want to do, which is coaches who are helping other people fulfill their destinies, you know? Um, what's one of the biggest changes, Terry, that, that you've had since this insanity began? You know, um, I think I'm pretty fortunate. So a lot of my clients uh, are employed, actually, most of them. It's, and I have kind of a gambit of young people who are going to look at what are next steps for them in, in change. Mm -hmm. And then on the other end of the spectrum, some older clients that are figuring out where they're going and they're very different paths for younger people versus older people. And, you know, how do they find a way to make changes when everything is so uncertain and we're almost in a holding pattern in a lot of ways? Um, so it's really, you know, navigating that landscape. Um, and figuring out where do I go next? It's like the coaches, okay, you know, it's it's meeting a client where they are. Right, right. And let me ask you something. Did you have any clients that were on a, a path that you had already decided? Okay, here's where we're going. And then suddenly that path got it just stopped. You couldn't go any further. Did, did you find you had to do that kind of adaptation to your clients? No, not oh, uh, right. no. Not, not really. Okay, um, fantastic. They're, they're each on a path in their company and, you know, where are they going to go is, is next steps and looking at how do you jump off of where you are onto some other path when it's very fuzzy. <laughs> That's you know, a nice you, way to put it, yeah. Right, how do you find a job today? Yeah. Um, people are hiring definitely hiring mm -hmm. um, but you know it's a different interviewing process uh, and I think the people that are hiring are probably not even sure what they're hiring yeah some that, thought that 
and I have a combination. I have I have people who are still employed, thank heavens, you know, but I have people who um, are working from home, and and that that is causing a problem too. It's like they're not really sure what to do. They're creating their own boundaries. They're creating their own mm-hmm. schedules, mm-hmm. Um, their own discipline, so to speak. So uh, that that becomes a problem also. So it's it's just. You know, you did, you did a great, I think it was a blog that called um, Dancing on Shifting Sands. Mm, and yeah. the sand, it's like we're in the middle of a hurricane. The sands are just back and forth and back and forth. And then right. we just don't know right. where it's going. So, so what have you done in a personal oh. level to adapt to all this? Um, interesting. So for me, I continue to work. Mm. And... Um, I think at the beginning of the year, one of my focuses for myself was to do podcasts and to do, um, I don't know, I was thinking, you know, very maybe unrealistically of doing TED Talk or something to get my voice out there. And it turned out that one of my former clients and client I still work with has a company and she started a women's group and asked myself and another coach to do some big zoom calls for the members of that group on um on executive coaching so that was one thing that happened exponentially and the other was i'm now doing some podcasts for them so this became an opportunity for you how cool did so one thing the other is i walk every day I go out and do two to four mile walks every day when possible. It's getting a little warm, so I can't mm-hmm. because I need to, I, I think like us, we, I need to have some sanity. <laughs> yes. And that's the way that I do it. Um, plus other things I'm doing. I Zoom with a trainer. I'm trying to keep my life as normal as possible. I go out, I, I do things for myself that I would normally do. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to keep some normalcy of a routine in place. On a personal level, I find that I'm doing, what are you? I'm yeah. doing for myself things I wouldn't do, things I wouldn't have time to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've signed up for um, a couple of classes that I was always interested in, but it was like, yeah, when I get the time, well, there's no excuse. I have the mm-hmm. time now because what time that I would have spent going out and that's not there anymore. So, um, so I'm, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of social en- enrichment, um, on a, on a physical level. I am not happy with what I'm doing and I'm in constant search. I am doing, um, zooming with my health club and things like that, but it, I don't like it and I don't do it all the time. So I'm looking for something to do there and seeing, well, how can I use this as an opportunity? So after this, you can coach me on that. <laughs> but, um, I would love to, no, yeah. no question. Yeah. And yeah, um, I'm also doing, listening to, you know, ICF does webinars or the Institute of Coaching which I'm a member of, does webinars. So I am listening to a lot of teleclasses, webinars, Zoom calls on what's going on in the coaching arena, what's happening. That's right. some of, so that I can bring some of that knowledge to my clients and you know, sound a little intelligent on that <laughs> level. <laughs> um, it's every day, you know, simple thing. I think going to the grocery store is now an adventure. Seriously. It's like, it and I'm, is. I'm coordinating my mask with my outfits and it's like, yeah, I'm really getting into it now. You know, it's like, okay. But do you wow. feel, I know, it's, it's a little, when I do it, it's like, oh, that's a little sick. Um, but do you feel that uh, you should be doing more? Because I have that nagging feeling. It's like, I have all this time now. And a God bless, I am still working. Hallelujah. And probably at a right. bigger level than I was mm. before. Um, but I keep thinking I should be using this time for something really, really worthwhile. But I, I, you know, I, I have that, it's always in the back of my head. Do you have that feeling? Um, not really, because I feel 
I'm, I've made some changes to where I put my website. So now I will be tackling with someone, a partner, mm-hmm. in how do I upgrade it. Oh. Um, I think at some point I'm going to go back to our podcast idea. Right. Um, we did talk um, about that. Yeah. Doing that. Um, maybe starting to write more blogs, which I haven't done. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't know what else, you know, at this point, I'm not trying to overload my brain. I think just trying to stay centered at, you know, at one time I did a Buddhist retreat many years ago. And when I go out on my walk, sometimes I'll pretend I'm at, at that Buddhist retreat because it was a silent Buddhist retreat. You couldn't talk wow. for a week. And um, trying to tap into the parts of me that give me an opportunity to be centered and not to plug into everything going around me. That doesn't help my sanity or my health, which I have to watch carefully. I think you may have tapped into gold. Um, This is an excellent opportunity to tap into, I'm gonna use your words again, an excellent opportunity to tap into different parts of yourself. Parts that you may have neglected, like the physical part, mental, that you didn't have time to do, uh, spiritual, if you're gonna do some meditation. And um, you don't have to do them all at once, but I'm thinking if you just take one and say, okay, next week I'm going to, write a blog. I'm going to write a blog and learn how to put it on my website. Just one task a week where you can go, okay, I have advanced from A to B and then from Mm -hmm. B to C. So that might be a great coping mechanism as well as a move forward mechanism. Um, That might be, I I think that's, that might be one of the golden rules. If we come up with golden rules, that would be one for me. It would be like tap into something that you, you, about yourself. You don't need anybody else to do it because there are a lot of people who are isolated and it's like, so what are you going to do in that time? You know? Mm. So that's yes. And even with clients, what's one thing, you know, when I speak with them, what's one thing you can do this week? You're not going to ask them to climb Mount Everest, but if they could just have find one molehill that they could tackle, uh, each week that so they're not in overwhelm um, that they can do that makes them feel good and not lost or in despair because there is a a an underlying um, community of vulnerability And even low-grade depression. I mean, I know Michelle Obama talked about it and brought it up. But I think that there is an underlying thread of how everyone is feeling today. And I think it comes and it goes, you know, because there are some days I'll get up and go, yeah, I'm so glad I have all this time and thank heavens I've got so much to do. And then some days I'll get up and it's just, it's not the same. It's like, ah, you know, I'm so tired of doing the same thing over and over again. And I think we've got to, when, when you say sit, when you say sit in our humanity, what do you mean? Um, I'll give you my impre- interpretation, okay. which is we all have we're all human and there are parts of us empathy caring um kindness um those parts that under normal normal whatever normal was (laughs) conditions we may not have tapped into as readily even leaders today, if you read anything about leadership today, it's about shifting gears and taking a different approach. It's, you know, tapping into awareness of the vulnerability. 
tapping into what's going on with your teams, your employees, they're working from home. Um, how are you connecting with them? And companies are having to let people go. Yeah. So they're not doing it in person. They're doing it on Zoom calls, yeah. you know, or on a telephone. So how do you do that task in a human way? Mm. That and also being humble, humility. Yeah. You know, being being in our humanity and being in our humility more than ever. It, it's interesting because I think this whole pandemic and then um, it has, has made us more conscious of our priorities and perhaps reevaluated them and shifted mm -hmm. them a little because mm -hmm. what used to be important my my priority was oh i've got to see a broadway play at least once a month why am i in new york city if not now that not an option so no. it's like, and how important was that i'm still alive i'm still working i'm still you know it was it was important to me at the time but it was not essential so i think we're, we're redefining what's essential and um Oh, would, would I kill to see a Broadway play right now? Yeah, and eat in a restaurant? Yeah, I, I, you know, but, right. But, right, but that's not the priority right now. And I think what, that's another adjustment for business leaders as well as individuals. It's like, okay, my priorities have changed. The, probably your company's priorities have changed. Um, the, um, you can notice the companies that, that used to what was it? There's one company that was um, um, an alcoholic beverage company, and because they couldn't open the bar, so they went into hand sanitizers. So, I mean, it's really thinking out of the box. And it's, um, I noticed the gas station where I go, he has a whole counter of um, PPE, you know, of things to do. Is it, everybody's adapting to the times. Um, exactly. Exactly. That's so true. Yeah, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's out of the box and flexibility. Boy, is flexibility, of, if you don't have it, you need to work on it, you know, because yes, it's needed now. Exactly. Key is flexibility, adaptability, being resilient, being able to pivot at any given moment, and being willing to reside outside of your comfort zone. Ah, yeah. Because now's not the time, even though we want to crawl into bed um, and put the covers over our head to feel that security blanket. Um, it's about being out there in new ways, being, you know, everyone is feeling this community vulnerability. So it's not like you're alone. And um, it's about creating change in a way that moves forwards the action and deepens the learning for our clients, if you will, mm -hmm. and for ourselves. If we're not changing, we can't, as coaches, ethically talk about helping our clients change. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and so this is a time if I were to be philosophical um, be. <laughs> <laughs> about self-reflection, like you said, we are forced to be in isolation, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And where as before you could had distractions. Oh, I can go to the show. I can go to the movies. I can go out to eat. I can, Oh, meet friends. Well, none of that is really available today. So we are left with our own reflections. And we were so used to, oh, I'm going to dinner. I'm going to the movies. I'm going to, like you said, no problem. It's like we were cut off at the knees yeah. in a way. And here we are, not having any of that really available to us and we're left to our own thoughts 
and what do we need to pare down? What do we need to change to help us move forward in whatever that new landscape is going to look like? And I think that's where coaches are going to come into play. Um, I agree with you because in, especially in New York City, you are bombarded with stimulation that, that you don't even create. But now it's a whole different game. And it's like, and if you look at it as an opportunity, which you always try to do if, if you can, it's an opportunity to really, like you said, get to know yourself, get to know what is it that you really want? Um, what is it that you haven't been doing that you could be doing? What should you stop doing? Um, you know, what, what is getting you where you want to go? And where do you want to go in this new environment that we have? Um, or is it a matter of survival? And that's okay, too, if you're just trying to get through and survive. Mm. We're, we're talking, you know, if, we're, if you're talking to someone who's been out of work for eight, four mm. months, five months, it's a whole different game yeah. than someone yes. who's working. Um, right. Unfortunately, Absolutely. their priority is not going to be getting a coach because um, right. you're not going to have the money. But I love the idea of your podcast because that's a way to reach people. Your blogs are a way to reach people. Um, I have a television show, which you helped me with, and then I also have a radio show. There are ways that you can reach people that they don't have to pay they don't, and, and still help right. them. And I think we have to keep that in mind because I think the role of coaches is not only advancement, but I think it also might be um, resilience, like you said, but I think survival. I said, I, I think in some cases people are in survival mode you know yeah. how are we going yeah. to go through this um right could be just right. mentally you know or it could be real how am i going to put food on the table but either way right. i think coaches are being called being called they're being mm. summoned to um let's do our thing this is what we've been right. saying we right. wanted to do right so. and it's also as coaches being able and willing to shift gears to step into whatever role the client is asking of us. Um, whereas that might not have been what was expected of us five months ago, six months ago. It is today, uh, at least from my perspective. And if you haven't found the space within yourself to shift gears, and you're stuck in one gear, and that's all you're bringing to a client, you're not serving them today and no. in any way. And, and I like what you said. It's like you have to meet the client where the client is. Right. And it could be this week they're here, and the next week it's like, oh, they fell into a fun. But you've got you've to shift with them, you know, because these are – unprecedented times we've never done this before no. uh, nobody no. has you know no. maybe in 1918 but they're right. not our clients right. <laughs> so, exactly it says like. we're we're sailing in uncharted territory mm -hmm. really that's what we're doing we are being forced to set sails in uncertainty unpredictability whereas we're used to on some level a very solid ground and when there is no solid ground um, again you have to learn to you know that blog was years ago and it's very relevant I may even dust it off change it and put it up again dancing on shifting sands it's very uncomfortable yeah well and I agree and it's like I think so I think if we were going to give people um, advice in, in the next four minutes that we have, or, or not advice, what may have tips, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think one would be um, just accept where you are and then mm -hmm. see how you can get to where you want to be. And if you don't know where you want to be, then how can you make where you are uh, progressive and helpful to you right um, if that right. Means, yeah i guess i don't like right. those words but yeah i would say flexibility right. just it's like right. you gotta exactly. go with um what it is and hopefully move forward right here's one thing that i tell clients and i did on the zoom calls 
It's about getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Ah, yes, absolutely. <clears throat> that would be the one thing that I would leave with coaches and tell clients. It's about getting comfortable being uncomfortable. That's not going to change today. No, uh, and we can't predict when it will. So rather than torture ourselves and go, oh, I really want to go to a play. What's up with this? Right. Um, what else can you do? It's like, well, how can you how can you make something else stimulate you the same way? It's like right. you got to step out of that comfort zone because right. um, pivoting. Yeah, yeah, pivoting and dancing, right. whatever right. it takes to get you exactly. going. I think what I would say also would be. <clears throat> And I, I'm so sick of hearing this phrase, um, we're all in this together. Yeah. And it's true, we are all in this together, but that means nothing if you're not going to have compassion and empathy for your fellow man. And I'm sure right. you've noticed while you're walking your four miles, right. uh, people are cranky out there and they're scared out there. And um, tempers are short and it's like when I encounter that it's like okay I got you I'm just as, I can be just as mad as you are anytime but right. um it's like all right I understand we're all I have something on my refrigerator that this says um everybody can you be a little kinder everybody can use more kindness right now you got to be gentle with yourself you have to yes. be gentle with others too it's it's we're all we're all in this together and we're all going to <laughs> You, you just don't know what people are right. going so you have right. to be aware of that. And we're all in this together, yet we're, <clears throat> we're all different in where we are exactly. in this togetherness or lack of togetherness. Yeah. You know, um, each one of us is at a different level. And if you can, absolutely. And if you're a little bit advanced today, then reach back and get somebody else, you know, right. call exactly. a person that that might be feeling down, you know, we can still call, we can still email, we can still do right. all of that stuff. So, but I think it's just, I think awareness, I like awareness and I like a reflection and I, and I like humanity. It mm -hmm. is, we're a part of it all and we all have our role to play. Right. Uh, and hopefully what you and I are doing is like, okay, we're, we're not giving any um, rock solid advice, but mm -hmm. we're letting everybody know it's okay. And there are ways to cope. And, we're going to delve into that in our next show, too. Mm. We've got like 30 seconds left. Do you have oh. any last minute anything? Oh, just it's wonderful to see you, Laurie, again. Oh, you too. You too. And I'm looking forward to our next Coaches Creating Change. Terry Gaffey here, wishing everyone safe passage. Yeah, in be this well. Time. Be well. Yes. That's, that's all. Be well and be kind to yourself and right. be kind to others. And we're going to be back in uh, two weeks if, wow. if this new Zoom thing works, and we'll, we'll let you know. Take care, everybody. You too. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.